Welcome back to the Deep Dive Series, where each and every episode, we take a look at a different NFL team and come up with a realistic outcome and prediction for them going into the 2022 NFL season. Remember, we wrap this sucker up with the 2023 NFL mock draft based on my predictions. And let this be a little appetizer for uh, Marcus's videos, because uh, the franchise guy, he does a great job. But those videos uh, are about an hour to an hour and a half. I, I'm a... a I, I try to keep it to 30 minutes, and I know he goes way more depth, but uh, let this be an appetizer. That way, you know, you go into it with at least a little know-how. But I try to do the best I can. What's crack a It's your boy, Baroshmo. Just in case you did not know someone, we're talking about the LA Rams, your former Super Bowl champions. And let's talk about what they got going offensively as we take a look at the offense for all intents and purposes we know this is sean mcveigh's scheme this is system he is the play caller he this system is kind of built basically built built around an outside zone blocking scheme though they do sprinkle in a little bit of inside zone a little bit of duos but they like to use motion they like to use shifts they like to get their playmakers out in space and they also try to create coverage mismatches however last season they did i would say got a bit away from the the run game a little bit um as they came they became very predictable at least with the run they would run a lot on first downs and they just didn't find a lot of success and they did kind of lean on matthew stafford's arm and i don't know that part of that could have been the cam Akers injury part of that could have been sony michelle was starting to command a lot of the volume there after the Akers injury and we'll, Sony Michel, it's kind of predictable. He's not, he doesn't do much in the passing game, so it's kind of predictable with uh, him on the field what you're gonna do. But uh, yeah, no, they they leaned on Matthew Stafford's arm. It became a very pass-heavy team, and you kind of saw that most in the red zone as teams typically just kind of sat back in coverage rather respecting the run. Also, we saw kind of a departure from condensed and bunch sets uh, as they, they 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 normally ran. So. I think that's going to change this year. I mean, also, there was, like, when it came to McVay, uh, there there were, like, sus timeout calls and just poor plays designed for fourth downs. But I think with Liam Cohn, um, probably mispronounced that last name. You would think four letters, it's pretty easy for me, but I'm terrible with pronunciation. Pronunciation. I can't even pronounce the word pronounce. But I think with him returning, because here as oc and i say returning because back from like 2018 to 2020 he was the quarterback and the wide receivers coach for the rams before he went to kentucky and was the oc there and we kind of saw very similar things from his tenure with the rams as that's kind of what he did with will levis and the kentucky offense now he returns as the oc this is gonna still be mcveigh calling the plays but i think we will see cohen like be like okay no let's go back to some things that we were doing very successful when i was with the rams not saying that they, obviously they won the super bowl so they do a lot of things successful but obviously you can get more from from this uh scheme and i think that a p big part of that's like you get a healthy cam acres back that's huge maybe we see uh it feels like with darnell henderson I just I don't know, man. I just feel like that that cat just hasn't really stepped up much. Like, okay, like he he had a decent workload la last year a lot because of the injury, but like the force missed tackles are were nothing to like. The, honestly, it, it wasn't it wasn't a good rate. Like it really wasn't. Only 19 force missed tackles on 153 uh, attempts, and I think part of that could be you know some shifts in the okay running too much on first down. Um, and maybe the move from condensed uh, and bunched sets. So you, they're, they're creating a lot of... Because like what McVay does, he likes to show you the same shifts, the same motions from these formations and then run a variety of different plays from that, whether whether they be in the run game or in the passing game that you can't really... You, you don't know. You can't tell what they're, they're, what they're going to throw at you. So I think maybe maybe... They bring they they do a little bit, um, or maybe they. How, how do you even word this? Like, they do not depart from what they did in from 2018 to 2020. 
like they did in 2021. I think that's the best way to say it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not great with words. What can I say? But also, I think the biggest question um, here will come with the offensive line. Uh, Andrew Whitworth, no longer on the team. So we're going to see, uh, we're going to see Joe Nate boom, nope, boom, excuse me, uh, take on, take on the role. And you know what? Uh, he didn't play much last year, but he looked all right. So maybe he's ready to take that step. Maybe he's like, yes, I am the left tackle of the future here. Uh, you know, actually, Whitworth during training camp, he's been working out with Logan Bruss, who's also now going to be a rookie star. I actually really liked Bruss. I was surprised that he went on day two, let alone, it, to be fair, it was like at the end of day two there, late in the third round. But still, I was kind of shocked. But I think he is one of these uh, pro-ready guys. Brian Allen, to, like this guy is coming off a career year. Keep in mind, it took him like, three or felt I think like three seasons really to get good part of that was there was injury but honestly like he, he wasn't playing well and then um they're gonna have uh David Edwards who actually had a pretty solid year at left guard so there are gonna be questions with no boom can can he step in the shoes of now gone hall of famer Andrew Whitworth uh Brian Allen can he build upon his contract year last year, Logan Bruss, how will he look? I have no questions about Rob Havenstein. He's a nice above average uh, right tackle in the league. And he, he, honestly, like last year, he played exceptionally well. Uh, looking at the depth, they got good depth there. I think uh, Bobby Evans is there. I think he's, he's better served as a depth piece a few times that he's gotten to like get starts and more so that was like back in 2020 and I think 2019, it wasn't great. So I think he's a fine depth piece. Um, Tremaine uh, Akram, a uh, former Clemson. I think he played tackle there at Clemson. Um, he's there at guard. I think he's fine fine depth. Uh, they bring in um, AJ Arcuri. Arcuri? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Former Michigan State offensive lineman. I, I, think, I think that's a dude that's going to grow as a very good bench player. Um, you got Jack, uh, Jack Snyder, who might not even make the roster. As you see, he's pretty low on it here but he is also uh one of these pro ready guys coming out of san uh san jose state but yeah no th th there's gonna be questions but i i feel good about this offensive line moving forward um i feel yeah i feel pretty good i think brian allen will do well i think nope boom will do well i think breast there might be some hiccups here and there but ultimately i like i was excited about him coming out in the draft uh, I mean, and with again with a healthy Cam Akers, maybe if Henderson steps up his game as a rotation guy, uh, Kyron Williams, he start starts on the pub. That that's kind of rough, but he's a very he's a very good in the passing game, whether it's as pass protector or a receiver. Uh, I think with um, the with Sony Michelle gone, the guy. <sighs> I think probably Trey Ragus, if that's how you say it, is probably going to be like the big back for this uh for this run game if he makes the squad uh, i really like actually uh jake funk out of maryland a couple of years ago but uh it's that's kind of cool that uh raymond Calias and uh trey ragus they're for they're former teammates from uh louisiana back in the day i mean uh I, one of them might make the squad maybe neither of them but i think that's kind of cool but uh yeah i feel good at, uh, about this run game and i feel good about the passing game man they added alan robinson shoot if you were gonna give away robert woods for pennies and dimes alan robinson's a wonderful signing we saw van uh jefferson really emerge last year as a receiver he's a very good route runner we that's something we knew about him coming out of the draft as his uh dad was a former uh wide receivers coach so very good route runner cooper cup obviously you know this guy's the not just the best slot receiver in football he, he's like a top five receiver in football and i think he's really going to he really um I think he's really going to change the how the approach to drafting that that the NFL like they're going to be like you know what if we can get a prime like an elite slot player in the draft we don't mind taking that guy in the first round and I think we maybe saw like some cases of that with um uh, guys like uh you could say i would say Jahan dotson though i think he does have the ability to play outside uh i think he actually he's pretty cooper cup-esque in terms of uh, how fluid he is 
after making the catch and just turning it up field. Uh, I mean, Cooper Cup did play like uh, he, it's not like he didn't play wide. Like 30% of the time he was playing out like as an outside receiver, but just man, he just carved up the middle of the field. So I think we're definitely gonna see NFL teams when it comes to the draft. They're gonna look at players that it's like, oh, they might be slot only receivers, but no, it's like, you know what? That has a lot of value in today's NFL. So I think I think we will see a change that if we haven't already. I mean, Traylon Burks, technically, uh, I think him coming to the NFL, he you want to start that guy as like the big slot because uh, that's where Arkansas played him a ton. Maybe ease him into playing more on the outside. So it's like, I don't know. Maybe the NFL is already moving to the, that direction, but they have a wonderful wide receiver in like core Aria trio there that's freaking wonderful. We can take a look. You, they still have Tutu Outwell who's – I wasn't a big fan of drafting because he's this gadget player. Marines return capability, though. We didn't really see much of that last year. Uh, I think he had a couple of fumbles last year, actually, as a uh, return man. But maybe he gets he's maybe he gets a bit more use this year. Uh, there's Jacob Harris here on the roster, like in terms of depth. Like uh, the depth's not great. Like it's really those three guys. Uh, Tyler Higby. Uh, to me is a top 10 uh, tight end in this league i think he's pretty underappreciated but we also saw uh down the stretch more so in the playoffs uh kendall uh blaton um or blaton however you say it really emerge as a pretty decent threat pretty decent threat he had a couple of bad drops but for the most part like i thought he was pretty good bryson hopkins i'm a big fan of i think he's uh he's a tyler higby-esque tight end uh, and they're like, ah, do they keep a fourth guy? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of that, uh, if they do, it's, I don't think that guy's really going to see much playing time, but the offense looks great. Uh, especially if they could stay healthy. Yeah. There's a couple of questions I would say from like the offensive line, but, uh, I, I feel for the most part positive with, uh, with those guys going forward, like Allen, Nate, boom, uh, Bruss, um, Matthew Stafford. Like, yeah, he had a couple of boneheaded mistakes, but for the most part, this guy's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And you saw what he can do when when he's given a very good squad all around. So let's go ahead to the defense. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Raheem Morris, freaking awesome uh, defensive coordinator. And let's kind of talk about uh, what he brings because – it's not really okay what he did in atlanta what we saw in atlanta that and it was mainly because he was under dan quinn that he was running a lot of man heavy cover three single high and that's just kind of not who he is because his mentor was monty uh monty kiffin who is more of this zone heavy like tampa two uh like too high and that's what we saw last year with the rams they were playing a lot of too high i think they were actually second in the nfl in uh or maybe third second or third in the nfl with how often they came they they showed uh like a too high shell they were i think second or third in how often they were in zone coverage and we saw a lot of blitzing from uh from raheem morris they i think they were like a 10th or 11th in terms of their blitz rate it's just their pressure rate's atrocious. Like, this team's getting pressure from Aaron Donald, and that's about it. Like, yeah, we saw a bit of it from uh, Leonard Floyd, but they, they need to be able to get more pass rush. They were 25th in terms of their pressure rate. When you're blitzing, when, when, when your blitz rate is that high, you better be getting pressure more times than not. So, and it's not like I think they didn't do a good job of, um, though they were kind of limited in that regard, uh, like w with their cap situation and how much draft capital they had, they were limited in what they could add. But losing Von Miller was kind of a big hit. So going like going into this roster, yes, Aaron Donald, he's your best pass rusher. Then you got Leonard Floyd, and that's about it. Like Greg Gaines is a fine nose tackle, uh, but uh, he doesn't bring much as a in terms of a pressure uh like justin hollins ah i feel better about that guy as a reserve or a rotation player terrell lewis will he emerge like he showed a little bit of promise um coming out of alabama but he hasn't really been um 
well because of, a little bit because of injury but he hasn't really seen the field too much these last few uh this i think last season he what he was on the field for about 300 snaps and uh, it wasn't great uh they list ernest brown here um yeah he's more of this like like five not even a five tech uh, he, he's like a 3-4 and more so on the interior. Uh, Ashawn Robinson's fine, but that's about it. He's fine. Uh, I would say he's more of this, um, he's more of a run stuffer than uh, a guy that would actually go and get after it. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, no, it's, uh, to me, it doesn't look good from a pressure, like from a, pa like a pass rush rate or from, yeah, I guess from a pressure rate in terms of who they're blitzing i think ernest jones is a prime guy like he's gonna be the guy that they blitz a ton uh bobby wagner i love the addition but yeah i guess like uh how often they actually did they blitz uh him last year oh only 39 times ernest jones uh who in terms of linebackers uh, yeah see when they bring extra pressure it's not like they're bringing it from their linebackers they're bringing it from like adding an extra pat like a pass rusher an extra interior player on the field so they're going to like a five front instead of like bringing pressure from their linebackers but like Ernest jones is a wonderful athlete they want to use him in that regard regard they very well can um Taven Howard's not been like he's been he's just a guy like that's obviously someone they could upgrade from and they did in the form of Bobby Wagner uh Anthony Hines is just a guy as a UDFA they bring in Jake Hummel it's the North Carolina cat I believe right maybe it's Iowa State let's see it's not like the draft was just a couple of months ago Hummel you were was it NC State was it NC State it was Iowa State it was Iowa State. Okay. Regardless, like I don't, uh, I don't even expect that cat to make the roster. Like, there's really no nothing to talk about in terms of that front seven. It's it's literally Aaron Donald. You got some nice run stuffers here and there. Leonard Floyd's nice, but I think you need someone else with him. Uh, and then, like Bobby Wagner and I think Aaron Jones are going to be a very solid um, front. And to be fair, this is a team that really likes to like likes their uh rather their linebackers and coverage they show a lot of light fronts so yeah if they're bringing pressure they're, it's they're bringing five on the defensive line looking at the secondary obviously you got Jalen ramsey though i think you're gonna see him more in the slot as that becomes a very that's a very valuable position in this defense as i think he led their whole team in slot snaps yeah it was him and then it was taylor rap so you got those guys uh, obviously, you bring back Troy Hill. You gotta expect him to take take on some of those slot reps as well. But I think he's also a guy capable of playing outside a little bit. Um, David Long, maybe he, he makes like David Long was okay last year, but not, I wouldn't say he was anything special. Like he was fine. Uh, Nick Scott, man, he was a guy I did not expect. Uh, for me, he kind of came out of nowhere and he played very well for this defense. Here, let me pull him up here. So you got him. You, they bring back a healthy Jordan Fuller, and that's kind of how Nick Scott emerged. Uh, Fuller got banged up. So I, uh, this is a team that loves playing three safety sets. So I think we're going to see a lot of that. I've heard really good things about uh, Kobe Durant. Uh, I think he had like two two uh, two interceptions. There we go um, in train camp. But at this point, he's going to be a reserve guy. Uh, Terrell Burgess, I feel like, is kind of that nickel box guy as well. He's, I think he was banged up his rookie year, um, which was a couple of years ago. I've heard good things about Russ Yeast. Does he make the roster? I don't know. Uh, I know Robert Rochelle's a guy that they're hoping kind of emerges, maybe challenges. David Long, they bring in Grant Haley, who's it was good depth. He's, he's a guy you don't want to see the field too much, but that's good depth in case uh, someone gets hurt. And uh, I'm looking at these UDFAs, and there's like, eh, like I loved TJ Carter. Uh, I feel like he's more uh, like I don't like that. I don't like I don't like him in the nickel. Uh, he he's undersized, and I get why you want to move him to the slot. That's kind of what Memphis tried to do, and it didn't work out well. And then he moves to uh, TCU, where he actually plays more of a uh, like a too high role, which I, I kind of like him. I think he could be a good center fielder, but uh, I don't expect him to make the team. Um, yeah, Quinton Lake kind of sucks. He's on the pub. He, like, 
I loved Lake. I loved Lake coming out of UCLA. Like he's not like he's a very well-rounded player, a guy that could play split high. Um, he he could play in the box. He can play in slot. He's gonna offer a lot of special teams. Like even if he he ends up being a guy that maybe cracks like 300 snaps defensively, just his versatility is so valuable, and you know he's gonna be a banger of a special teams player. So I think the secretary looks exceptionally well, uh, especially when you got uh, <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. Dude, Jalen Ramsey's kind of a dog uh and i feel i feel good about their their depth david like i said david long's adequate i think he's fine uh robert rochelle was a guy that who was this kind of like physical freak uh kind of was it central arkansas central missouri i can't remember but um who you knew that he was a guy that was very raw so he's a guy that has incredible size incredible athleticism let's see if he puts it all together eventually so maybe he does this year but the defense i expect to be really good i think von miller was a huge hit but hey i mean i don't i don't want to take the uh take the wind out of the sails of leonard floyd he was very good last year 14 sacks 73 pressures on only 643 pass rushing snaps so we'll see we'll see we'll see let's go ahead to my projected starters and i do this not based on base formations but on who's going to see the field the most so let's go ahead and get into the nitty-gritty with the offense as we got Oh, gosh, I didn't even, there we go. <laughs> I was like, I don't have it up here. Oh, no. Uh, we got Matthew Stafford there at QB. Cam Akers, a running back. Hopefully he stays healthy. Van Jefferson, Allen Robinson, a receiver. And, yes, Cooper Cup is going to see a majority of his snaps there in the slot. Tyler Higby. And then Joe Noteboom. Got David Edwards, Brian Allen, Logan Russ, and Robert Havenstein. I feel good about the offensive line. I feel good. And then on defense, I got Leonard Floyd, Aaron Donald, Greg Gaines. Um, Greg Gaines, actually, he stepped up big last year, and I do think he's going to continue to see his snaps go up. And then Sean Robinson is going to be a very good early down guy. Bobby Wagner, Ernest Jones, Jalen Ramsey, Troy Hill, and then I'm like I said, a majority of the time they're running three safeties on the field, or at least those guys, those are going to be the guys that see the most snaps. So I got Nick Scott, Jordan Fuller, and Taylor Rapp here. Let's go ahead to my predictions as I got the Rams going 11 and six, and obviously they could go a bit higher. I have them being a third in their division, not in their division, third in the conference, winning their division. And let's go ahead with the game by game breakdown as I got them beating the Bills right out the gate. It's a home game. Come on. You got this. Give your home home team something to hoo hoo ha ha about. And then I got them beating, uh, honestly, their schedule is pretty easy after that. You got Atlanta. You got the Cardinals who will not have D hop. Uh, San Fran, probably going to be a tough one. I gave San Fran the home win. Uh, and then before going to your bye, you get Dallas who. Uh, it's a very good team. And then Carolina, who ugh, your guess is as good as mine. Coming out of the bye, it, it's a little rough. I mean, you get a home game against the Niners. That's nice. But the Niners always play the Rams pretty hard. And then you got the Bucks. Tom Brady's hard to beat. Period. Uh, I got Atlanta, or I got uh, the Cardinals getting a victory over them because now they'll have D Hop, and I expect the Cardinals to like. Ugh, again, man, going back, I feel like Cardinals was a team I over projected too much. Uh, especially, I hate their, I hate, I hate their corner position, the corner depth. Like they have one of the worst cornerback rooms in all of football, and that will catch up to them. So I could really see this Cardinals team being like a six, six win team, but like. I don't know. I don't think, like, Kyler Murray, I don't think that'll happen. I think, if anything, they'll be, like, eight to nine wins. And I think I projected them at nine wins, and I really feel like that's their ceiling. Uh, got them beating the Saints, losing to the Chiefs, beating the Seahawks, beating the Raiders, uh, losing to the Packers. Packers are always a good team, as long as Aaron Rodgers is there. Uh, beating Denver, and that's a good Denver team. And then I have y'all losing the... <laughs> The home game, the away game, whatever you want to call it, to the Chargers. Because, hey, they're going to be a, in a tough division. And that's going to be a tough win down the stretch and then beating out the Seahawks. So I feel good about them. I got them going 4-2 and two in the division. I got them having a winning record against uh, winning teams 
six and five, so it's kind of close. And is probably a team that'll have a very like, that'll do very good during the playoffs. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I always look forward to having that nice, beautiful football discourse with y'all. And let, again, always let me know if I, you think I missed anything or you feel good about a player. Uh, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.